oil and water, lust and sympathy are life and death my way through the sun, where originates all the pain that leaves my memory a traumatic sponge and sinks to you. Shadows the moon that sings to you. It misconstrued my answers due to the lack of love.
sideways. Good morning, good morning. I hope that you can hear me well, that you can see me well. Go ahead and drop a comment in the comments box. Now, if you don't know where the comments box that's okay is, that's okay. You'll see a box, a little thing that says YouTube, YouTube, watch on YouTube. Click on that and that will take you to the comment section. So you'll be able to have the chat open. You'll be able to see what everybody else is saying. You'll be able to write in there as well. Awesome. And then the other thing that I want you to do as well is to make sure that I can actually let me just open up. I've got two computers going here as well is to do. Don't need to listen to myself over there. OK, can I see your chat? Yes, I can see your chat over on YouTube. So click on the watch on YouTube. Now, if you're thinking, oh, my gosh, but I'm on Facebook. This just popped up in my Facebook and I'm watching in Facebook. I want you to head over to our website and watch it there. And so my team is going to pop the link into the chat now so that you can go to travelmarketingandmedia.com slash live event three live event three that's where you're going to want to watch this so if you're over in a facebook group and yeah we did stream it there on purpose we streamed it over there because we have such huge communities in our facebook groups and we know that a lot of people will turn around and say i didn't know that was on or i didn't think that i could commit to saturday and all of a sudden here they are on the couch with a copy thinking yeah i could actually watch this so if that's you uh, leave Facebook, click on the link in the comments that is travelmarketingandmedia.com slash live event three. And I'm going to pin that to the top just there. There we go. Excellent. So that everybody can click on that because that's where you're going to want to do it. Now, when you go over to that page, I'm going to show you what it looks like on my screen. So let me share my screen with you. I'll be sharing my screen a lot this morning because we're going to have a really good morning. We're going to do a lot of work together this morning on your business. And if you've never been here before and you don't know what to expect, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Alrighty, so let me go across and show you actually before we do that because we've got a lot of people coming in this morning go ahead and let me know in the chat if this is hashtag your first time if it's your very first time here go ahead and do hashtag first time in the chat for me and if you have been here a minute then you could do hashtag i'm back if you if you this is like a this is home to you if tmm is your travel marketing home then just write hashtag i'm back i would love to see who i've got in here i want to know where everybody's from oh my gosh look at all the first timers coming in wow hi i'm sandra nice to meet you you know um I have been on television for 15 years now, and I've been doing this for seven years with this community. And every single time I do this, I get super nervous. You might be able to hear it a little bit in my voice because I want to do such a great job for you this morning. And one of the things that I always forget to do is to introduce myself and who I am. So I'm going to do that quickly in just a moment for you. But it's so nice to see so many first timers. And for those of you who are back again, welcome back. For those of you who are back, Today is not a time where you can just sit down and chill with me. We'll do that another time, maybe in Amsterdam for those of you who are going. But today, I actually want to get some work done. I want you to leave today with full commitment to your visual branding. I want you to be able to say, these are my colors. These are my fonts. This is my core message. These are the things that I need to do on my website to fix it. Or perhaps I need to start fresh with a website. Either way, whether or not someone's going to help you to do your website or you're going to do it yourself or we're going to do it with or for you, it doesn't matter. Okay. Today is all about making sure that you walk away 100% clear about your branding and your website and what needs to happen next, okay? And it doesn't matter where you're up to in your travel journey. You might have just started. Actually, let's do this. Let's put in the chat, how long have you had your travel business? Years and months or weeks and days, if that's the case. Years and months or weeks and days. I'm going to quickly adjust. I just looked up and I feel like this camera has, oh, let me turn this off. StreamYard has this really yucky setting where it adjusts your skin. It's like a touch up for your skin. I don't need that. Let me turn it off because I look too blurry. Okay. I did notice though that I'm picking up hues of my shirt. I'm blending all together. <laughs> okay. So I'm glad to have you all here today. You're going to want to make sure that you are joining us over on the website. So let me just pop up that website event for those of you who are still in Facebook. And then we're going to get started. And media slash live event three. 
Okay, perfect. So that's where you're going to want to be. If you are over on Facebook, come and join us over here. And then you'll want to click on watch on YouTube. When you click on watch on YouTube, you're going to see all the chat messages. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And we are going to get started today. The first thing we're going to do is I would like to know from you, how do you feel about your current branding, your colors, your logo, your fonts? How do you feel about your current visual branding? How do you, and that would include your elevator pitch as well, your quick, I am this person and this is what I do. When someone asks you, what do you do? So I want you to tell me, uh, how do you feel about your current branding in the chat? And let's have a look at some of these comments coming through. All righty. How do you feel about your current branding? That's what I want to see. How do you feel about your current branding? And I'm going to pull it up on the side. So a couple of different things here. I'm not 100% sure about it. Christine says, feeling confident about my branding. Where's your next travel? Says, I'm good with my branding. I love this. Globe Sage Travel, mixed bag, mixed bag. Shana, hi, Shana. Shana says, good start, but needs work. Pamela says, I'm happy with it, but I want to spiffy it up. Um, Vacation Seeker Travel Agency, it could be more refined. Boyd and Travel, I think that's Natalie, maybe, says, oh my gosh, the comments are flying way too fast. Uh, it says it needs a refresh. Michael says it could always use improvements. Uh, Stefan or Stephen, I'm sorry, need help with my elevator pitch. Jubilosa Travel, it's, I'm okay with it. It could use a bit of a refresh. Uh, some other comments, mixed feelings. I'm okay with it, somebody says. You need to be more than okay with it. Someone says, I love my logo and colors. Laura says, I love my logo and colors, but I need help with my rebranding and my pitch. Um, Megan says, now that I'm in it for eight months, I know my brand and I need a complete remake. Now on that, that's quite common that that happens where people will have a brand and then you'll start getting into your travel business and then you'll decide that you need a rebrand. And it might be because you solidified your brand, your niche, like you know exactly who you want to sell travel to now and you know exactly what you want to sell. You've picked your ideal, like your partners, you know exactly who your client's going to be. And you think, wow. That branding I did way back when, that doesn't suit me anymore. So let's jump straight into the slides. I'm going to make them this big, I think. Well, this big? No, I'm going to make them this big because I want you to be able to see them. Okay, perfect. Now, for those of you who are watching live, I'm going to do like a formal start now because we're going to chop it at the beginning for the replay for everybody. But for those of you who are watching live, stay until the end because at the end I have just for you because you're on here live, we have a bonus branding workbook and it's got the template for your brand in there that literally in less than 30 minutes, you can fill it all in and you'll have a gorgeous brand. I'll show you what it looks like. You'll only get that if you are here live. I really appreciate you turning up live. I show up for you and you showed up for yourself this morning, which is awesome. So we'll give you that at the end. Okay. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to 2023 Reset Your Website and Branding. This masterclass is for you if you don't love your branding, if you don't love your colors, your fonts, your logo, if you don't have an elevator pitch that you're comfortable with, that core message that when somebody asks you, what do you do? You start with, well, it's a little bit complex, but well, you know how, well, what I do is if it starts with anything like that, then you don't have a solid core message. Or if it's a, if you say, I run a travel business, that's also not a good answer. You need a spectacular one sentence killer answer. And you're going to have that today. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach a little bit, and then we're going to go to the workbooks at the very end. If you are, the workbooks, usually we make them printer friendly, black and white. We give you a black and white option. We started doing that to be a little bit more environmentally friendly, use less ink. But today though, today is all about color. So we didn't hold back on the color. What we did do was make it PDF um, edit editable. I always say edible. Those of you who have been with me for the last seven years know I say edible. We've made you an edible PDF um, and I'm just going to go with it. So if I say edible, you know what that is. And what you need to do, though, is you need to download it onto your computer first, save it onto your computer, rename it maybe, and then you can edit it. Don't open it and start editing. 
download it first and then edit it and we'll go from there. So let's jump straight in. For those of you who don't know me, hello, hola, ciao, bonjour. My name is Sandra McLemore. I have been in the travel industry since December 1998. And I started as a travel advisor, actually. I started with STA Travel and I didn't have to go out looking for my clients. I was very lucky. Well, I don't know if you can call a $14,000 a year salary lucky plus commissions, but I was lucky because I worked in a branch and I worked in a super busy branch. And my biggest problem with marketing was making sure that I got to work early enough to grab the seat right by the door because the seat by right, right by the door was what we would call the hot seat in a good way. It was the money seat. So over the past 25 years, I worked my way up through STA travel into a management role. I worked in the product department, negotiating airfares with airlines, tours with operators. Cruising wasn't such a big thing for that company back then. Um, and then I worked my way into the cruise line industry where I walked all the way up the corporate ladder to VP level. My last job, I guess you could say, in the travel industry was a senior uh, fleet revenue manager for the entire Royal Caribbean fleet. And so my job was to make sure that every single department on board where you could swipe a card or spend money hit target. So I used to wake up every morning to 24 spreadsheets and they were either, it was a, literally a sea of green and red. And my job was to make sure that by the end of that cruise, whether they were on a three day, a 12 day or a world cruise, that they hit their target. And if they didn't hit their target, that the rest of the fleet could increase their revenue to help reduce the deficit. So I was very well known at Royal Caribbean for the, in the 24 ships for the shoreside office, all the way to the captains and the hotel directors. I, they used to call me the money whisperer because I could make the cruise lines make money. And I'll tell you a quick story. One of the things that I, an example of how I used to do that, say for example, the casino was down. I'll never forget, I woke up one morning and I got a phone call from the chairman of the board at Royal Caribbean saying, doing a great job, Mariner of the Seas just lost $1.5 million overnight in the casino on a private baccarat table. Please fly to Japan today and fix it. All I heard was fly to Japan. I'm on vacation in my head, but actually I needed to fix it. So I had to figure out very quickly how to effect change that week. And I don't know if you ever remember seeing like Doogie, was it uh, the, on The Good Doctor, you see it, but I remember seeing it on the show before that. I don't know if it was Doogie Howser or something else, but on The Good Doctor, when the doctor has a problem, he closes his eyes or he sort of stares off into space and he can visualize, he can visualize the, the solution. And that's how my brain works with marketing and revenue. Hence, I was in charge of the entire fleet of Royal Caribbean. And so I would close my eyes and say to myself, okay, if we push the evening show back by 15 minutes and we tell the maitre d' in the dining room that he needs to move super fast, less chit chat tonight, get through the, set, the first service as quickly as possible, then we'll push the show back by 15 minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to move from a 25 minute gap between dinner seating and the show which is enough for everybody to quickly get to the theater and we're going to push it back and maybe add an extra 20 minutes to uh, push the show back 20 minutes later and then we've now created a 45 minute revenue window 45 minutes is too short for people to go back to the cabins and change so what are they going to do they're going to take their time going through the ship and we're going to make sure that they go through deck four or deck three. Deck three is the casino. We're going to do a slot tournament and we're going to do a tables tournament, buying it at $5. And on the shops, we're going to pull the jazz duo. They're going to sing covers that are based on the demographics. So I tell the guest services manager to pull me a report on the ship of the average age group. And that's going to determine whether they're playing 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s or up modern day music and we're going to have this jazz set we're going to have the bar servers mixing up shots and cocktails and passing out samples and that's going to create me the revenue window that i need i know exactly what that's going to do that and then we're going to tell the cruise director don't open the doors until 10 minutes before showtime and the whole ship is going to be in a frenzy but it works because i get 24 ships to do exactly that and i can pull maybe two hundred thousand dollars off of a ship or one hundred thousand off a small ship and by the end of the week we've made up our 1.5 million dollar um, loss that we had and hopefully that person who won 1.5 was able to go into the casino again spend a little more because i called the captain of the ship and said captain i want you 11 nautical miles out from the shore side not eight and he said Sandra, I can't do that. It's it's the hats at my usual route. I really like it. The pilot's already gotten off. He, he really likes that route too. And I say, Captain, I really need you to do this because I need that casino open. I'll send you an email. Thanks so much. And that's how we do it. 
And that's why I'm so good at helping you in your travel business, because my brain still works like that. It's my superpower. So let's have a look at your website first. Then we're going to go to your branding and then we're going to come back to your website. Are you ready to refresh and reset your brand today? Let's do this. Okay. The very first thing I want you to know is that when you have an opportunity to drive traffic, people to your website, consider the conversion that is best for your business. It's always better to have new email subscribers than it is to have new followers. Okay, I'll say that again. It's always better to have new email subscribers than it is to have new followers and more engaged email subscribers than more social followers. Okay, you want highly engaged email subscribers. For that reason, you should always prioritize traffic flow to your website rather than the social media platforms. Just like that story, and there's a reason I told you that story, just like that story I told you now, when you have an entire ship going to one of two seatings in a dining room, you have the opportunity to manipulate in a good way, the flow of traffic on the ship, the foot flow of traffic. Have you ever considered that when you're on a ship that somebody somewhere, a little puppeteer in the background is figuring out where you walk, how long you walk, how long you're in a particular area, the fragrance on the ship, the lighting on the ship. Someone like me, well, that was my job, used to have all of those thoughts in my mind of where people are walking and where the traffic is. It would determine a lot of decisions that I made on board about sales and specials and themes and entertainment and all those things. And I could work together with hotel directors and captains and cruise directors and food and beverage managers. And it's the same thing with your traffic, with your audience, with the people who maybe they don't even know about you yet. But if you have to send them somewhere, send all of that traffic to your website. When we sent out the email about this masterclass, we sent out, I think two emails, maybe three max. And we had almost 500 travel advisors sign up because they either wanted to be here today or catch the replay in the next couple of days. It was critical to them. Now, some of you already know that I'm not on social media anymore. We took our business off social media. We did that back in April. And we have not looked back. If you want to learn more about that, take a look at our, take a listen to our podcast episode about it. Um, SK or Flora, can you put the podcast episode number in the uh, chat, please? Um, go and listen to that after this masterclass and you'll learn why we came off social media. But I'll tell you this, if I had a posted about today's masterclass, I guarantee you that based on the fact that we have maybe... I don't know, 6,000 followers on Instagram, 4,000 followers on Facebook, that's 12,000. Based on the fact that only 4% of those people are going to see our posts, let me ask Siri. Hey Siri, what is 4% of 12,000? Sorry if all your devices are going off. Oh, she's not listening to me. Hold on, 4% of 12,000. If I had have posted on social about today, then I would have gotten maybe 480 people see the post, just see the post. Of that, around probably 5% will click. That's the average click rate, 5 to 6%. So oh, let me do that again. 5% of that, 10% would be 48, 24 people would have clicked through. So I probably would have got today around 20 to 25 people registered to attend the masterclass instead of 500. But yet all I had to do was to send an email and put a button for you to click on. Why? Because social media does not favor sending your traffic off of social media. Social media wants to keep your traffic on social media. It's also very difficult if you're not running and paying for ads to get your stuff seen. So that's a whole nother topic, but I definitely recommend you listen to that podcast and make a decision. Maybe you want to give social media a break for a little while, or maybe you want to can it all together. But the number one thing I want you to take away from today is that regardless of your brand colors you're about to choose, regardless of the logo, the elevator pitch, the changes you're about to make to your website, remember this, your goal is to get people to your website. Your next goal is to get them to want to sign up for your email list and or reach out to you to make an appointment, okay? So this is just a really quick graphic. I'm not gonna go into big detail about this, but um, I definitely can in a separate video. If you want a video all about marketing funnels, let us know in the chat. 
Um, but this basically is a marketing funnel. All of these tan colored um, arrows are your ideal client. They're the type of people that you want to have in your travel business because they want to book the kind of travel that you want to sell. You have to turn them from strangers into email subscribers because with email subscribers like I did, you can send out an email, people will book. People will book. Um, uh, John is a travel advisor in our community and he has an email list of around 10,000 travelers that love the type of travel that he loves to sell. He works in luxury cruising, so he does ocean cruising, river cruising, and he's also started doing um, bay and sea escapes. So like Halong Bay in Hoi An, Hoi An Bay in Vietnam and like super luxury vessels in these bodies of water around the world. And he has an email list that he has been working on now for four years under our guidance. And he now can send out an email saying, hey, I've got this, this travel opportunity. And he will always get, and it will say, starting at this price, uh, travel on these dates, um, here's some pictures, here are some of the experiences that you would have, the destinations you would go to, you must be ready to book and pay a deposit by this date, full payment by this date. He will always get, every single time he sends out an email, always get at least 20 bookings, at least 20. At least 20 people out of 10,000 people are going to book that experience. Can you imagine? Because now he is literally booking only what he loves. So that's why you want to turn strangers into email subscribers and then eventually turning email subscribers into paying clients. So when somebody comes to see you for the first time, they see your branding and they see your website when they are at the top of funnel. They are still a stranger. And your goal with your website is to make sure that you turn them from a stranger into an email subscriber. You're not going to turn people into email subscribers on Instagram or TikTok or Pinterest. That conversion, that, that action that happens from a stranger into an email subscriber, that actually takes place every single time on your website. The only exception to that would be if you ran ads and people filled in their information while still on Facebook or Instagram. But 99.9% .9 of the time, that trigger, that, that switch from stranger into email subscriber, that happens when someone visits your website. Okay. So let me have a look and see, does that make sense for you? Let me know in the chat. Does that make sense? Okay. Miranda says, so mind blowing, right? When you just have a look at the numbers, it is mind blowing. So speaking of numbers, I want you to know your numbers. Okay. You need to know your numbers, sales, goals, expenses, and profit margin, because generally generating leads won't have any math behind it unless you know your numbers. You have to know your numbers. So you might want to take a screenshot of this or take a picture with your phone, but this is absolutely critical. 10,000 engaged subscribers on my email list. 45% of them listen to our podcast. 9% of them have downloaded our app. 85% of them have attended at least one free training a year. Out of all of that, 12% of them end up signing up for Travel Marketing Revolution, our most incredible signature course, and around 5% sign up for membership or our all access pass. Now, do you know your numbers? Do you know the numbers for your business? This is what I want you to know. So this is the screen actually that you also need a screenshot of. Take a screenshot, take a photo of this one right here. Okay. I want you to know how many email subscribers you got last year. Now, for some of you, that will be easy. It will be a giant, big, fat zero. And that's okay, because that's what I started with. That's what Oprah started with. Okay, how many email subscribers did you get in 2022? Or you could even do 2023, because we're more than halfway through now. How many proposal requests did you get in 2022 or 2023? How many consultations did you have? How many of those paid a planning fee to move ahead? How many of those booked? And then later down the track, you need to figure out how many of them referred somebody else and how many of them booked again. Because when you learn the percentage conversions from subscribers to proposals and proposals to sales, your whole life will change. And I, and I say that it sounds really dramatic, but your whole life will change because this will guide these numbers, what you do. 
this will guide what you work on when you wake up every day and you sit down at your desk and you pick up your coffee and you say to yourself, okay, Nicole, okay, Matt, okay, Jenny, let's get working today. These numbers will define what you do. So I want you to let me know in the chat, in the chat, how many of you know all of, let me know, I, tell me either, I know these numbers already or I need to figure them out, one or the other. Tell me, I know these numbers or I need to figure them out. This is critical. I'm going to give you a second. And then you should be easily able to figure out where you're going to find these numbers. So you would go to your email marketing platform or perhaps you would go to your calendar and count the look at your diary and look at the appointments that you had on your planning fees. Maybe you can pull up QuickBooks to see how many planning fees you charged or whatever account you PayPal or whatever you use. Okay. Oh, the comments. Okay, I haven't seen one person say that they actually know these numbers. So this just might be your biggest takeaway for today. Because I can tell you the minute that I learned these numbers, my business went from making $30,000 in my first year, I think it was 30 or 45,000 to 300,000 profit in my second year to almost a million dollars in my third year. And that's how this business became a multi-million dollar business. It's not because I had a good idea. It's not because I work really hard. It's not because of the number of hours I work. That is a huge myth. It is because, because actually right now I work probably two full days a week, maybe three full days a week. And there are some weeks where I don't work at all because I'm traveling, I'm on set for TV, uh, I'm doing family things. And then there are other times where we're really busy and I'm working five days that week but I definitely don't work full time. It's because I know these numbers. Okay. Amazing. There's like three people I saw in there that know these numbers. I am so excited for you that you are going to learn these numbers. Have you got a photo of this? Have you got a screenshot of this? Because this is what you're going to do when you leave me today. Okay. So knowing those numbers, your branding and your website have to be in alignment with those numbers. What exactly does that mean? So what that means is that Say, for example, you've decided, like John, that you want to do luxury cruising, right? You want to do luxury cruising, you want to do families, you want to do groups. Say, for example, that means that if that's the niche that you have chosen, every single thing inside of every single thing inside of your website, every single thing inside of your branding decisions, everything has to be in direct alignment with those goals. Okay. So your colors that you're about to choose have to be in alignment with luxury cruising. You're like, how? I'm going to show you. Your fonts have to be good for luxury cruising. Your elevator pitch or your core state, your core message has to be in alignment with that. The pictures, the images that you have on your website have to be in alignment with what you want to book. If you are currently somebody that books everything for everyone or anything for anyone, your business is not going to last. It's not going to survive. You will always be in paycheck to paycheck mode. And I know that you didn't start this business because you wanted to live paycheck to paycheck. But when you find that you're living client to client, you are living paycheck to paycheck. Tell me in the chat, is anyone right now wondering where your next client will come from? or a little concerned about where your next client will come from. You might be worried. Tell me how you feel. Are you worried because you don't know where your next client's going to come from? Are you, do you have a little bit of anxiety? Are you a little bit stressed? Are you totally cool because you know that you're, you know where your clients come from and they're frequent enough? Okay. So a lot of people in here don't know where their next client's going to come from. So if you're living client to client, you have just created a business where you're living paycheck to paycheck. Or as somebody pointed out, no paycheck to no paycheck. And you don't want that. And it's quite likely that you are working really hard right now. Like to the point that somebody in your family or your friends is like, are you coming to bed now? Are you, are you done? Or gosh, you work all the time. You're trying to make all the ends meet, but they're not. And people are like, just stick with it. Just stick with it. Be consistent. So you feel like the more time that you put into your business, the, the, the faster you'll move. It's not true. It's not true. 
you could work one day a week and get more clients than what you're getting now. Because what you're doing now, if you're one of the 100 plus people that just answered, yes, I have no idea where my next client's going to come from or how long it's going to be until my next client comes. And it stresses me out. It gives me anxiety. It means that you are not doing the right things. You are working hard and no one's going to take that away from you. But it means that what you're doing is not in alignment with what you should be doing. OK, so I want you to understand that everything has to be in direct alignment with your sales goals. If you want to sell Disney, all your branding has to be like Disney oriented If within the Disney rules. If you want to sell cruising, everything has to be cruising oriented. If you want to sell all inclusive resorts, it's got to be AI oriented. If you want to sell like everything food related, food travel, it's all got to be food related. OK. So let's have a look uh, now at your the concept of a brand. I think a lot of you feel like if I just choose colors like this and some fonts and I get a logo done, that's my brand. A brand is not a brand until it is consistent. A brand is not a brand until it is consistent. So right now, let's brainstorm a couple of people, a couple of places where people might see your colors and your logos and your fonts and your images. Where might your visual brand show up? So let's say website. That's one place where people can see your branding. Where's somewhere else that people can see your, bland, your branding? Where's somewhere else that people can see your branding? On your business cards, where else? Where else can people see your branding? On your business cards, on Pinterest, that's right. On your website, on your newsletter, on social media. So you might wanna write these down onto a little list because once you've figured out your colors and your fonts today and your logo, these are the places you're gonna to have to go and you're going to have to start updating. Email signature, that's a great one, email signature. It might be your settings in Travify or TravelJoy. Did you upload your brand colors there? I love that, James, in what you wear, if you're doing photo shoots or branding shoots in what you wear, you don't want to go change all your brand colors and forget to get rid of those yellow shirts and change them out. OK, so lots of different places here that you're going to want to make sure that you update your branding. OK, so this is an example and it's far back, but that's fine. You're going to actually get this template today. We're going to I'm going to give it to you at the end where you'll be able to pop in your logos across the top. And I definitely recommend that you do a mood board. Uh, this is a little blurry because I've just zoomed in. But basically what I did here is I just went and found a bunch of travel photographs, lifestyle photographs. It could be food. It could be destinations. It could be things around the house, artwork, anything that kind of pulls together that what works with your branding. So you'll see on here, nothing in here has got cartoony kind of objects, for example, right? Nothing's got, there's no big speech bubbles or little like Jasper ghost things or Gumby's in here. That's not my brand. That would be below brand for me. Um, you'll see in here that there's no like big, bright, wild colors. Every single photograph or image in here has at least one of my brand colors. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do that for your business today. I think it's really helpful to have a mood board for your business. We're going to look at colors and we're going to look at fonts as well. And we'll talk a little bit about logos versus headshots. OK, so. Now let's have a look at your actual brand colors and your image selection. And I'm really pleased to tell you that one of the things that we are giving you today at the end is a selection of brand colors. And I'm going to bring that up right now just because do, 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 here. Uh, oh, here it is here. I'm going to bring it up on my screen and show you what your bonus looks like because I want you not to stress right now about um, your colors. So this is the booklet that we're giving you at the end, those of you who showed up live. If you didn't show up live, I'm sorry, but you'll be able to figure this out yourself. This is my brand guide right here. And this is the blank one that we're going to give you if you showed up live. So you'll be able to insert everything in here. Definitely spend some time on that mood board. You just wanna, I'll show you where you can get pictures for that, but I think that it helps to pull everything together. Um, color palettes because this is where we are now. Some people find color palettes really, really, really difficult. So I pulled together the other night 20 color palettes that work really well for travel. And you'll look at them and you'll think to yourself, they're not my colors. They don't speak to me. They're not my 
I wouldn't wear these colors. It's not about that. These colors here work really, really, really well for travel photos. I'm not a huge fan of reds, oranges, and yellows for travel. Uh, yellow is not too bad. Reds and oranges for travel, but I did include um, three or four of them like that just because I knew that you would want them. So if you are going to struggle with your colors, please don't struggle. Please just come here and choose some branding colors. My favorite ones are the first four, but I love a lot of these. Um, there are so many good ones in here. And the same thing with your fonts. We've given you some font options here where there are font pairings. You could also add a third font or just a variation of one of these for your a trio if you want to do a trio. But we've made sure to give you some font pairings on here. So we'll come back to that later. I just wanted to show you that you don't have to be stressing right now about your font selection or your color selection. So let me go back to my screen because I wanna talk about font colors. Okay, so, uh, hold on one second, let me put me back on. Okay, so here's the deal with colors. I want you to choose up to three or four colors for your branding. I don't want you to have any more than four colors. Now you'll see that some of the palettes that we gave you out of the 20 have got six or seven colors in there. Just choose the ones on there that you want. They kind of all go together, so we gave you, there's multiples in there that you can select from them. There are four colors that you always want to have in your branding. You don't need all four. You just need at least one of them. So the first one, write this down. The first one is blue. You want to make sure that you have a blue, a green, a gray, or a brown in your travel colors. Green, Blue, green, gray, or brown. As you want to write that in there for me, blue, green, gray, or brown. So when I say those colors, automatically you would get a visual in your head of brown. And maybe it's like me, I get chocolate brown or like a wal walnut kind of brown or an espresso brown in my head when I think of it. But don't limit yourself to that when you say brown. Brown includes all the different hues and shades. So it could be a tan, a caramel, like my branding. It could be a beige. It could be a real deep espresso brown, um, like a black brown almost in there. It could be like a gray brown kind of color. Brown is really important in a, a, in a, a color in travel branding because each of those four colors actually are important because they match landscapes and cityscapes and imagine if you had a website where your brand colors were like neon pink or blue or yellow they don't you don't find those in natural landscapes or cityscapes okay so blue is a color like when it comes to consumer colors blue is a color that is reliable it's trustworthy think of majority of the airlines in the world used a blue back in the day and many of them still do now British Airways, Air France, American Airlines, Continental, um, all of these airlines all had blue in them. Some started to pick up reds. You'll find that most airlines actually have the Olympic ring colors as their base. Like you'll, you won't find airlines that have got like big bright pinks in them or a lot that have purples in them, for example. Most of the airlines take their colors from the Olympic rings. It's all to do with consumer color psychology. Um, blues are really good because you'll find also banks use blues. A lot of the social media networks, when they first came out, they needed to garner trust. So they have, you'll find blue in those uh, banks, Citibank, Chase, Bank of America, um, loads of them have blue in there. Um, Twitter until must jacked it. Um, Facebook, um, Instagram originally had blue in it. All of these brands want to be seen as reliable and trustworthy. Cruise lines, Royal Caribbean, Holland America, Norwegian cruise lines, celebrity cruise lines, I never look at the camera when I'm thinking, my eyes go everywhere. So think about that. Blue is a color of trust, but blue doesn't have to be like a deep blue, like a Royal Caribbean or a celebrity blue. It could be a light blue. It could be a pastel blue. It could be a deep navy blue. And then when you start playing with blues and greens together, you get into turquoises and jewel tones in there as well. Teals. I like those colors. Green is a color that works really, really well with travel imagery as well. So I always recommend, that's why it's one of the four colors that I recommend. And greens, like I said, could be anything from emerald green to pea green to mint green. Just want to stay away from greens like lime green and neon green. Those are not helpful to you. And then gray. 
I love gray. Gray is so underused. You know, I'm in a Facebook group for people who only wear gray. I don't only wear gray, but I love wearing gray clothes. <laughs> it's like my third dark neutral. I wear black, navy, and gray. Um, but gray could be anything from a really light gray that's just like almost off white, like just off of the white spectrum into the light grays. So it sits somewhere in there. Or it could be like a concrete, polished concrete kind of color through to a really dark charcoal slate color in there. So blue, green, gray, or brown. You want to make sure that your brand has at least one of those colors. And I just want to give you two to three colors that I would... Uh, maybe three or four colors that I would consider staying away from using very much. The first one is red. Now, I only know one or two travel advisors that have successfully pulled off red, and it's because of the shade of red that they chose. But here's why red should not be your color. Tell me in the chat what kind of businesses use red or when it comes to buying and selling when you see the color red. Where do you see the color red used? Just in life in general. Emergency response vehicles, fire trucks, ambulances, danger, sale, fire, clearance, cheap, deal, BOGO, fast food. How many fast food? I think of a fast food chain that uses red. There's only one or two exceptions to these rules. And I'll, uh, Virgin Voyages, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Target, affordability. Triple A, affordability. What else? Aggressive businesses somewhere. Food. What is some food? KFC. Yep. Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, Taco Bell has red, Red Robin. Okay. What about grocery store chains? Grocery store chains. Trader Joe's, Ralph's, um, bonds. I know we have different ones in different states. So those are just the ones up here. Okay. So red, I would really caution you. You can see that there are exceptions. Delta has red. Virgin Voyages had no other option. No other option because Richard Branson shows red from day one. No other option. I believe that if Virgin Voyages was his first, if it was his first brand ever, that he would not have chosen red. Okay. So I really want you to think about where red is used and what red signifies. And the fact that red also does not help you when it comes to choosing travel images, okay? Pink, someone's asking here, oh. <coughs> oh, thank you, excuse me. <coughs> Imagine if I was one of those people that sneezed 13 times, usually three, but that's okay. All right, so pink. The only reason that I would say that pink is okay, pink is okay for two reasons. Number one, if you're looking for female audiences, female audiences, and know that not every female identifies with the color, their color being pink. I'm not a pink person. This is the closest that I come to pink. And I see this even as more like a coral or in person, it's actually a brown, like a dark salmon, dark coral color. Pink is very, very feminine. So if you know that your audience would love pink, go for it. There, nothing made me more frustrated than this latest era of Barbie. Um, and then the other thing with pink, pink can be used really well if you do a lot of Caribbean and Mexico, and that is actually your niche. So the oranges and the teals and the yellows, because those are all, you know, like the same colors of buildings that you'll see in Bermuda and Barbados and uh, Curacao. So that's the time where you could. Uh, orange is another color. It's so close to red, but usually orange is the color of um, fun brands. So think Fanta, think Nickelodeon. So you have to ask yourself, do I want my brand to match that kind of a theme? Um, but those would be the colors. Purple, purple's better than pink. Purple is much better than pink because remember purple is a blend of blue and red together. So I hope that that helped you a little bit in there. Um, I just want to give you a few more tips for choosing your colors. I recommend having a color that either all that either can all the colors can take white font white words or black not both so you'll see in my brand let me put it back up on the screen again for you you'll see in my brand that i've got these three the, my two main colors are the navy and the caramel both of those can take white text on the top of it so you can see it up here in the logo the navy blue can take the white text, the caramel can take the white text, and the gray can take the white text. 
You want all three of your brands to take either all white text or all black because on your actual website, you want to make sure that it's not too busy. Now, I do use black text everywhere in my website, and I'm just going to pull my website up for a second so that you can see a real example of it. So right up on here now, you can see here that white text goes on the blue. When I want to use black text, I only use a white background. That is a huge, huge pro tip that if you're going to audit your website in a moment, I definitely suggest that you double check for that. Only uh, whenever you have a white background that you only want to use black text on there. Even though one of my colors is blue, I still don't do it. You want to make it as easy to read as possible. So when I use my blue background, I only put white text on it. You'll never see me put um, like this color text unless it's a button or something really unusual because it's just not as easy for everyone to read. And just because you can read it doesn't mean that everyone can. I use a lot of things where I'll put images in the background or color blocks in the background, but I try to put the majority of my heavy text, uh, black font on white backgrounds. Every now and then I'll make a tiny like variation of it, but it's still an equivalent of the white family by putting like a light beige in the background just there. And it just breaks it up having a beige background there and a white background here. So all of my um, all of my buttons and things like this, you'll see whether it's blue or the caramel color always have white text on it. So I definitely recommend that for you. Imagine here if I'd have gone tan caramel box with black text and then navy box with white. It's too busy. It's absolutely too much. Okay. So let's go back to the colors. I want to talk to you about images next and maybe by doing your mood board and your colors at the same time, it's going to be the easiest way for you to do it. You want to choose images from Unsplash, Pexels, and Pixabay. I personally like Unsplash as a place to go and get images. Um, I'm going to open Unsplash now and show you. Okay, so this is my Unsplash gallery here. And say, for example, I've got this, uh, hold on, let me go into something else. Okay, so I have a collection of images in here. I have a lot of images. So I'm just going to have 125 collections. This is a free website. Say, for example, you specialized in, um, let's see, like the Middle East, for example. I'm going to open this one, the United Arab Emirates. You'll see in here that the images have a lot of these tan, beige colored tan colors in here. You'll see that a lot in the architecture, whether or not it's in Qatar or it's in the United Arab Emirates. Dubai, a lot of these kinds of brown sort of colors. So this is where it would be really good for you to have a tan or a brown in your images, camels, sand, buildings, right? You'll see a lot of those colors and then you'll see a lot of blues as well. So maybe you'll pick up a tan and a blue. All of the skylines, whether it's in the morning or the evening, always have those tan colors, the beaches and so on. Let's go back to look at a completely different destination. Let's look at uh, Indonesia for example. If you sold a lot of destinations like Indonesia, like Asia, like the Caribbean, then you're going to see in here a lot of these teal kind of colors because you'll see those in the ocean, right? Oh, that's Australia. That shouldn't be there. You'll see a lot of the greens in here because you'll see rice fields, you'll see palm trees, volcanoes. You'll see a lot of that teal blue again because of swimming pools, not just oceans. Those are grays from the monkeys. A lot of browns and tans and greens in here. So can you see here by choosing any of those, one of those colors from that palette that you'll always be better off, you'll always be able to match um, images. Let's have a look at Mexico. If you sell a lot of Mexico and the Caribbean, this is where you can tend to have a brighter color palette. So for example, you can have images in here that have got a lot of oranges, reds, yellows, pinks, and teals, you could decide to have one of those in your color palette, but just one. Now, this is really odd to find a picture of such bright pink that big. If you were going to do any of these bright colors, remember that you don't have to use them equally, right? You could use one more than the others. And when we do the brand board at the end, when I give you the brand board, I'll show you how you can get these images and put them on your brand board. There's one of two things that you could do. You could either download it so you can just hover over an image and click on the download button. 
that's it. It literally just downloaded to my computer. Um, or you can, um, and then upload it into Canva. See, it's right up here. Or you can upload it into Canva to put on that template. Or I can show you how to search images inside of Canva. So I just wanted to point that out to you that very much depending on the niche that you have booked, that's going to determine a lot. Like if you're in Europe or um, Asia, see the Mexico colors again come through as a very different color palette. Look at this very, very different color palette than what you would have if you were selling Europe. And all of these images would look amazing on a, on a mood board and they would really help you to figure out what your colors should be. And then I'll just show you one final option. Um, let's look at Hungary. Budapest. So you'll see in here, these colors are not as bright and not as bold as Mexico. You'll find colors in here, but not as bright and bold. Okay. If you sell a lot of Europe, I really do like an orange, like a terracotta or a sienna for you because um, the rooftops in Europe will always have those colors there. Um, and depending on the destination, you're going to see a lot more of one color than the other. Let's look at Greece real, as a last one. You're not seeing any pinks. You're not seeing any bright oranges in here. You're seeing a lot of whites and blues and grays and tans. So if you specialized in the Mediterranean or wanted to sell a lot of that, and it doesn't mean that that's all you have to sell. OK, I hope that that helps you out just a little bit there. But you really want to make sure with your image selection, unless you're a personal a professional photographer, that you don't use your own travel images, that you use professional stock images. OK, so DIY photos straight away are going to cheapen your brand. I would look at um, Unsplash, for example. It's free and it's royalty free. But listen to this. Unsplash has rules. All of these do. So what I want you to do is when you go into Unsplash, I'll just share my screen again. Go all the way to the bottom of a page down here and you can learn about Unsplash down here. Click on about and you can learn a little bit more about Unsplash and you can also learn about the licenses in here, about the community in here and about how to use their images. But if you clicked on any image, let me just go back to an image. Say for example, I wanted to use this image right here Firstly, you can click on the info button. It'll tell you how many times it's been viewed and how many times it's been downloaded. That shouldn't bother you at all. It will verify exactly where it is. And it will say here, free to use under the Unsplash license. You click on the license and it's going to bring up the rules. Make sure that you understand the rules of the images before you use them. Okay, so uh, doing a mood board is definitely going to help you. Your brand colors. Choosing your brand colors is like riding a roller coaster. It's scary and it's exciting and it's a good idea to start. And then within minutes, it's not that fun anymore, but it's super important. Here is my number one tip for you. I want you to spend a maximum of 30 minutes confirming your brand colors. And you might narrow it down to four or five different palettes, but I only want you to spend 30 minutes doing it because honestly, I could spend 30 days. I could spend 30 months doing my branding. I could spend years fixing colors. But while you're spending that time doing those things, you're taking time away from other things that you need to do. So don't spend any more than 30 minutes choosing colors. And I think a lot of you, honestly, are just going to use the colors that I've given you in the 20 pack. That's totally fine. Start there. And then I want you to sleep on it. That's my second tip for doing your brand colors. Okay. So let's go back to your fonts now. With your fonts, here's the thing. You want to keep your focus when it comes to fonts on readability. Don't try to be cute. Try to be clear. Don't overthink it. Maximum 30 minutes you want to spend looking at fonts. Remember that the stunning images of the destinations and the experiences are going to be the hero on your website, not the fonts. Have you ever seen fonts that you have to stare at the word for a long time before you can figure out what it says? I saw some on somebody's website the other day, the word colorful, and it was written in a cursive font. And I looked at it for ages trying to figure out exactly what it was. And it took me so long. I didn't even know that it was that it said colorful. Now, when it comes to the number of fonts you need, you'll need two or three. Okay. We only use two. Our two fonts are currently uh, Audrey, as in Audrey Hepburn, and Muli, M-U-L-I. And we have different sizes of Muli. Sometimes we use a bold Muli, sometimes not bold, sometimes italicized, sometimes underlined, but we only use two fonts. You need a font for your headings, a font for your subheadings, and a font for the body. 
I really like having the heading and the body as the same font. So both of them, Muli, for example, and then maybe use Audrey as my, because Audrey is a little bit more decorative, use Audrey as a subheading. Okay, so you only want two or three fonts. And if for some reason you don't like the fonts when your website is done, the good news is that if your website is created properly in the beginning, it's set up well, it's just a couple of buttons that you need to click to change right across your, your website. So make yourself a little note now that if you're changing fonts on your website to make sure that you're changing them in the place that it's universal, where you enter into your fonts, upload your colors so that it applies across your whole website. That's what we mean when we say universal. You don't want to sit there and do each individual text box one at a time. Okay. Um, for the fonts, I've given you in your bonus brand pack a set of, I think, maybe 20 font pairings, and they're super simple. Let me just, exp oh, I want to explain one quick thing about fonts. So with fonts, there are serif fonts and sans serif fonts. San, S-A-N-S, as in without in French, right? Serif fonts are fonts with clicky bits. So, you know, you'll have an L, which just could just be a straight down line. That is sans serif without flicky bits. Or you can have an L with a little flicky bit at the top, then go all the way down and a little flicky bit at the bottom. That is a serif font. I definitely am more partial to sans serif. I don't know about you. I like fonts that I can read easily. Uh, if you just want to start at a basic font, I think a sans serif font is the best way to go. Muli, our choice of um, a font, is a sans serif font because the extra flicky bits make me crazy. It's entirely a personal thing, though. If people didn't love, san love serif fonts, there wouldn't be thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of them. Um, a pro tip, when you choose your font, you can go to websites like 1001fonts.com and download them. Just make sure that you read the terms and conditions. Um, I learned this the hard way when I trademarked travel marketing and media. I put in my trademark application. Um, we had to show proof that we were allowed to trademark the font and we were not and we had to change our fonts and it was so frustrating. And we're going to go back and update our trademark again very soon because we've changed brand colors and logo and even like the world map that I had behind my logo, my trademark couldn't be approved at the beginning because that world map was downloaded from Shutterstock. I had to get my team to create, draw a world map so that we owned it, yeah? Um, if any of you watched the home edit, on Netflix, um, I forget the names of the girls, Cleo and someone, they have all of these labels that you could buy at like the container store in Walmart for your kitchen pantry, whatever. That's actually Cleo's handwriting because they knew that if they were going to make it into a commercial business and they were going to trademark it, that it would be easier to create their own brand font. One day, maybe I'll just create my own font for my accent font, I don't know. Um, the usually um, you can get really good fonts on Google and Canva in there. You just want to make sure that if you're going through that trademark process that you uh, check the terms and conditions. Okay, so let's go back to slides. I'm excited to fill in this workbook very shortly with you. All righty. So your logo. Can I tell you that for the first six years of my life when I was running businesses, not this business, I did not have logos. And for the first three years of running this business, we did not have a logo. What we had was our business name just written out just like this, okay? We had uh, Travel Marketing and Media. It was Village Girl Marketing in the beginning and then Travel Marketing and Media. And it was just written out, okay? It was written out as a word. We call it uh, a word mark. That's what it means. And I would recommend for your first logo that you use a word mark. Just use the colors that you've chosen and write your business name, type your business name, and that's going to be your logo. You could do it in the color variations, create it in Canva, make a transparent background, whatever you need to do there, and sit with that until you are sure that that's what it's going to be, and then have an illustrator or a designer do one up. Do not go out and do logos that are illustrations and designs and drawings in them. It's not worth your time. This could literally be done in a matter of minutes. Our logo that we are using right now, it's not actually this one in the image. It's a round circle with TMM written in it. How much more simple could it be? Right here, actually. And that brings me to my next point. Keep it super simple. Nobody is going to spend less with you because you don't have a designed logo. We literally put an airplane in the background to make it travel and we put TMM. 
And this started out as our submark, which is what we would use. It's a variation of a logo that you use on social media. We ended up using this mostly as our logo. Now, one of the things that I want to bring to your attention, using your logo can help strengthen your brand, but using your face helps to build trust with your audience. So which one is more important to you? Your clients want trust in the person they hand their money to at a business more than the business themselves. If they don't have a personal connection with the person, no business is going to take place at all. People will not buy from you if they do not have a connection. People will not come in and spend $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 for their family vacation if they have no connection with you. So you need to choose when and where to use your logo and or your face. And I have to tell you, when we were doing social media for travel marketing and media, I ended up switching it away from my logo and to my face because I felt like people, if I just showed this TMM logo to a group of travel advisors at a conference, some people would know it. Maybe 10% of the room would know it. If I put my face up, more people in the room, maybe 50% of the room would say, oh, that's Sandra. Maybe they don't remember my last name. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't remember my business name, but you can build a connection. I always use my picture at the bottom of my emails. I use it at the top of my email in the banner. Always. Pro tip for you. If you're sending emails out, which you should be, and you have a banner at the top of your email, always have your picture in it. Because when people send me emails, it's quite often there's someone in my inbox that shows up every day. It's so annoying. I want to unsubscribe, but I need to take the time to make sure that I know who it is I'm unsubscribing about. Um, there's this person called Emily Rasmussen. And I have no idea who that is. But when I open up the email, this is literally what it looks like. I'm like, who are you, Emily? But when I open up emails from us, Obviously, I know who it is because it's me. But when we open up emails from us, it's very clear straight away who the email is coming from because it has my picture in it, right? And if it doesn't have my picture in the heading, it always has my picture in the footer. So that's an example right there. Oh, hold on. My camera's not on. One second. One second. That's an example right there of what a banner looks like at the top of the email. And I almost always put my face in it right there. And then at the bottom of the email, I will always put my face just like that in the email signature. Now, a lot of the time I will open up an email, like I was saying before from somebody and it won't have any indication of who that email is for. So this is an email that I got from somebody. I don't remember who Sean Jensen is. And it takes a lot of calories on my end to think about who Sean Jensen might be. And it forces me to either read the email or abandon it. So I abandon it because I don't have time for that right now. But if it's somebody that I know their face pop up, that makes a huge difference. Okay, so let's jump in to, uh, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. Do you, are you going to use your face or are you going to use your logo more? Or are you going to use them both? One, the other or both? Let me know in the chat. And it's time to write your core message. Okay. All righty. Hold on to your questions. If you've got questions, I'll do a QA and a at the end if we have time. Okay. So let's do your core message. Right now, we're going to type one sentence that is going to be your core message. So when someone says to you, what do you do? I say back, I create, plan, and book luxury cruise experiences around the world for families. It's pretty cool, guys. That's pretty cool because it tells you exactly what I do. There is zero, zero concern or question or anything there about what I do. So let's have a look. It says, I create, plan, and book luxury experiences around the world for families. Now, this one sentence elevator pitch has no industry terminology. It has no fancy words. These are all words that people use every day. They're words that come out of your mouth. They're words that come out of your clients' mouths. And it has two elements what you do and who you do it for. So what you do, I create, plan and book luxury cruise experiences around the world. That's what I do. Who do I do it for? Families and groups of friends maybe. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to write your core message using exactly this formula. So you can use create, plan and book or you can use, just use that for now if you want to. You could also say, I plan itineraries 
I plan luxury cruise itineraries. I create luxury cruise itineraries. I don't like the word using just the word create. And my reason for that is because then it's a bit ambiguous as to whether or not you'll actually book it for me and take care of all the problems and challenges. Planning, planning to me on its own feels like, well, you just do the planning, but you don't take accountability for anything afterwards. And I might be the only one who feels this way. If you just use book on its own, well, then I ask myself, well, I can book things by myself. So I really like all three of them together. I plan, create, plan, and book, or I design and book itineraries, or um, any of those words. And honestly, have something rather than nothing. You can always change it later on. But I want every single person in the live chat, there's over 200 people online right now, I want you to write one sentence. It's not going to be amazing. It's not, but it's going to be done. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be done. So let's start looking. Float and flag. Oh, I love float and flag. Uh, float and flag. I teach people to scuba dive and then take them around the world to blow bubbles. Love it. She does, um, it's Tammy, I think. yeah, uh, does um, scuba diving. That's her niche. So that's super cool. To anyone who is not your ideal client, they're going to be like, eh, good. Good, but to your ideal client, they're going to lean in. Okay, so uh, next one, I'm going to read out some of these for you. Actually, let me see if I can put them up on the screen. Let me see if I can put up some of these in the screen. Okay, bear with me. New comments. Okay. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to put some up on the screen so you can see them. I design and book group trips for women 60 plus. I love that. Whoever did that one, though, I'd love to see the word travel. Incredible travel itineraries, group travel itinerary, uh, group. I just need to see the word travel in there because trips is not as obvious to everybody. Okay, next one, Parks to Paradise Travel. I create, plan, and book luxury theme park to paradise experiences in the U.S. for families. That is amazing. That is amazing. What were you saying before that? Because that is clarity. I have gooses all over my body. I have zero doubt what you do and who you do it for. Amazing job. Okay, Jamie. I, now, don't get offended if I don't give everybody that kind of reaction. I just got I had a moment there. Okay, so uh, I help travelers design and procure the perfect celebration travel experience to suit their style. Too wordy, too many words, my love, and procure is not a word that we use on a daily basis. Find, just use the word find because that's what procure means. Um, I help, uh, I design and find the uh, design and, God, do you book? Do you do the booking? Because maybe you just want to say book. I designed and booked the perfect travel. I designed and booked celebrate uh, travel experiences for your uh, for your for the, your uh, most biggest for life's biggest celebrations. I like the end bit. Life's biggest celebrations for your biggest life celebrations. I um, design and book in. Um, incredible travel itineraries to celebrate your life's biggest milestones at events or something like that. Keep playing with it. Keep playing with it. Okay. Melissa, I create plan and book luxury cruise vacations with an S my love around the world for couples. Yes. For lovers, for couple. I love the lovers. I love that because it kind of puts the, Ooh, the lovers, that's us. Okay. Uh, Lisa says, I help busy families. Now, I love this. Let's take a pause for a second. I know Lisa. Lisa knows us. She's been in our community for a minute. Look how Lisa put another adjective in there. Just one word. I always tell you to use less words, but here she's used one word, busy families. There's a difference between families and busy families. If you are a parent in this group or you look after other people in this group, the minute that you read the word busy, does that not make you resonate a little bit more with it? It does for me. I'm a busy mother. <laughs> I am a busy mother. I We started this at 9 a.m. Before 9 a.m., I made breakfast. Um, I loaded the dishwasher. I made both beds. I got my child dressed and packed a day bag and sent him out the door with my husband. Then I made coffee, did my own face, didn't have time to do my hair today, came down, set up my lighting and got ready. And then I remembered that I didn't have any slides. So I quickly made some slides because I spent my whole time on the workbooks. 
I'm busy. You are busy. So when you put a word like busy in front, curious, adventurous, hungry, these are words that people resonate with. So I help busy families plan vacations of ex, uh, vacations full of experiences that reconnect and recharge them. To reconnect and recharge them. Something along those lines. I love that. Okay, Sarah, I create and book amazing luxury vacation adventures for families. That is so simple and so perfect. Don't change a single thing about it. Okay, next one. I plan and book travel, making my client's dream vacation become a reality. So the problem with this one is I don't know who you do it for. Do you do it for families, groups, uh, history lovers, uh, cultural, culturally curious travelers? If I read this, I wouldn't know who you are. So think of it in a, in a real estate term. Do you sell mansions? Do you sell family homes? Do you sell new build homes? Do you sell fixer uppers? I wouldn't know. And I wouldn't know who you are. So I wouldn't know if I am your client or not. Okay. So just some food for thought there. Go right back and do basic. Who do you do it for? Okay. Stephanie, I create plan and book adventures for families and empty nesters. I love that. And then you know what I would do in brackets after empty nesters and their friends. I love that. Okay, next one. I create, plan, and book luxury vacations for families and multi-generational groups. Love it. So good. I would change that to be multi-generational families and groups of friends. Okay, next one. We help busy families disconnect from hectic schedules and reconnect with each other and enrich their lives through travel without having to stress about the details. Way too long, my friend. You've used commas and you've used one, two, two of them and three periods in the middle of your sentence, which means you have too many words. Commas mean that we have too many words. I could hear a child screaming, but it shouldn't be my child. Okay. So uh, I want you to pull that down. We help busy families disconnect from heavy, from hectic schedules. I love that bit. I don't think you need to say the bit reconnect with one another and re, uh, for, disconnect from heavy schedules and reconnect through travel, through incredible travel experiences. I would leave it at that, through incredible travel experiences. The rest of it's good, but you'll just be able to use it elsewhere on your website. We'll just do a few more and then I wanna move along. Uh, Jolene says, I design and execute luxury itineraries for your dream experience. So what's missing here is, uh, exec firstly, execute is not a word that we use in day-to-day -day life. So I would take that out. Um, design, plan, and book. Use that one. I design, plan, and book, or I design and plan, or design and book, luxury itineraries for, who do you do it for? You're missing the who, okay? The who is critical, everybody, because it tells people if they're for you or not. Uh, Janine says, I create, plan, and book complete vacations around the work for adventurous travelers, around the world, for adventurous travel. Okay, I like that, but what are complete vacations as opposed to an incomplete vacation? So just have another think on that word complete. Uh, two more. I create, plan, and book exciting river cruise itineraries for those who love to travel. Instead of for those who love to travel, people wouldn't go on a river cruise if they didn't love to travel. So I think the second part, Jackie, is redundant. But what kind of people want to go on a river cruise? Because the only problem with putting river cruise there um, is that people might not identify. I have never identified in my life as being a river cruiser until I went on my first river cruise. And the only reason I went on my first river cruise is I had to for work. It was never an idea of mine or on my bucket list. So um, it might be that there's like 150 new ports of call that they, that they can't get to on an ocean ship. Um, so for cruisers to explore the rivers and oceans of the world or the rivers of the world. So maybe for cruisers, because then who the who you do it for is a cruiser, which means you're gonna get the attention of the ocean cruiser, but exploring rivers of the world, exploring um, um, unvisited, just, uh, exploring new ports in rivers around the world or something like that. Okay, two more, one more, one more. Um, Okay. Uh, Amy says, uh, bonus points for having a baby in the photo. It says, I create, plan, and book luxury cruise itineraries for 
luxury travel uh, luxury travel so we don't want to use the word luxury twice ideal client is wealthy baby boomers but not sure how to say this in a sentence amy why baby boomers baby boomers are my parents age and they're in their 70s and headed towards their 80s is that your ideal client um and i would be confused about why that would be your ideal client because you my friend are super young unless that's a picture of your granddaughter you are very young. So I just want you to think there about why that is your demographic. Um, but you don't have to, I love the way that people call out ge uh, generations in their core message, like for millennials. I love that. Um, I wish somebody, I haven't seen anyone in here want to work with millennials, but millennials are the richest generation on the planet and the most populous generation on the planet. And they're interested in spending more money on travel experiences and luxury than actual material goods. Like, I don't know why nobody's trying to focus on millennials. But anyway, just some food for thought there. And then my last one. Okay. I help, Jackie says, I help busy people save time, energy, money, money, and stress by planning and booking every detail of their vacation for them. No, 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 no. Good. I love the attempt here, but this is what I'm going to tell you. Don't talk about saving money in your core message because you're going to attract money savers. Okay. Um, I would take out money. Um time, energy, and stress but, um, with white, uh, I would say busy people. I would change that to busy professionals if they're working people. Uh, I help busy travelers save time, energy, and stress by planning every detail of their vacation something like that. Okay. So we've done a bunch of those. I wish I could do more. I wish I could, I could do like an, an entire two hours on just that, but I want to move along with you. So let's keep moving. All right. So that's your core message. You are going to do that core message and then you're just going to leave it and you're not going to mess with it. And when the next time somebody says to you at a, at a barbecue or when you meet a new person, Hey, Jenny, this is my friend, Sandra, uh, Sandra, uh, this is Jenny. Then you say, hi, Jenny, how are you? Nice to meet you. What do you do? And she'll say, oh, I have two kids. I blah, blah, blah. What do you do? Oh, I book luxury cruise itineraries on oceans and rivers and seas for families, luxury travel, families that love luxury travel. Just so much easier and to the point. I guarantee you, you'll do a lot better. A couple of tips for your website about your menu and your footer. So firstly, this is crazy, but I want you to do it. I want you to write this down. I want you to take your menu off the top of your website. I want you to take your menu off the top of your website because consumer science and behavior has shown us that the minute that someone opens a website and they have a menu across the top, they now have decisions to make, choices to make. That's too much for somebody who just came to your website. Have them read from top to bottom and put your menu in the footer. So that's the first thing I want you to do. We haven't had a menu on our website for seven years. And we have tens of thousands of people visit our website and tens of thousands of paying clients and have made millions of dollars of sales. We have no menu. Stop with the menu at the top of your website. Have them read through your website in the order of information that you want them to read through, okay? In the foot, and then also I want you to remove, I think it'll come up in a separate slide, but I want you to remove your social media icons from the top of your website. I'm gonna bring up a website on the screen in a minute to give you an example, um, a travel advisor's website. In the footer, you would have all your menus in there and your social icons on there. But think about this. We talked at the very beginning that you worked so hard to get people to your website. Don't give them, like, make them make a decision of where to click. That's too hard. And also, don't leave them off of your website. You should have no links on your website that go off your website. Not one. Okay. Next, 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 next is social icons. Oh. There we go. Take your social icons off of your website unless you want them on there. Put, put them in the bottom of your website, tiny itty bitty on the bottom of your website. Um, I will show you on our website, just on the page that we're on right now. You have to scroll down to the bottom and we purposefully used a color that didn't stand out a lot and put them on there. OK, it's just not important to have people going back to social media once you get them to your website. The website is like the ultimate destination. And then you're trying to send them somewhere else. OK, home page layout. I want to walk you through before we open up your workbooks. I want to walk you through a um, and you're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, we took so long to get to the workbooks. We needed to because the workbook's going to be easy after this. I just want to pull up um, a site that I really love. 
um, that was done by a travel advisor. And it's not a DIY site. And we also didn't make her website. It's called a done with you website. She was actually part of our website in a weekend. Um, and she, so, which means that she made the website in a weekend. It was amazing. And sorry, I should have had this ready. I just decided to show it to you now. I, uh, there is a rule. I do not want you to go to this website. Before I bring it up on the screen, I do not want you to go to this website because I don't want you to jack with her analytics. If she suddenly has 500 travel advisors to go to her website, that's not fair for her because it's going to mess her Google Analytics. So I'm going to share it with you on the screen right now. This is a website that was created in Website in a Weekend but for exemplary travel advisors. I'm going to make a video just about this website to show you. Um, let me just make it a little bit bigger on the screen so that you can see it. Okay, and so notice at the top, she does not have a menu. And I actually have, was messaging with this travel advisor yesterday, Patty. Patty has so much traffic to her website and so many bookings now, they can barely keep up. And Patty trusted me and did all of these things that I'm telling you now. So get rid of your menu at the top. You only want one button, get started, okay? And that actually leads to her Calendly page which opens in a different um, different window. And we love things opening in different windows because then if people close down Calendly, they're not off of the website. Scroll down. She says, we help busy travelers plan and book extraordinary experiences worldwide on land and at sea. So clear what she does, okay? Exceptional service, unique itineraries, personalized advice. Your next vacation is closer than you think. So she has here, she didn't have a lead magnet at the time, but she does, I think she does now. So she just had basically a sign up button so that people could sign up for her. Um, they could subscribe to her email list and it takes them off into a different page to be able to do it. Um, there's beautiful Patty talking about her business. And this is all very strategic how she wrote this. It's not about her. It's about her business and how she can help people. Um, this is just some of the stuff that we get people to do on website in a weekend, but she created this all in a weekend. But notice one of the things that she's done on here, she's written in on here, solos, families, groups, very clear who she books travel for. Her three steps, connect, curate, and confirm. Have a video or phone consult to learn your tastes and what you want for your next vacation. Our travel experts will craft a personalized itinerary to suit your travel style and goals for your trip. And then step three, we book, confirm, and prepare customized documents for your trip while you pack. How clear is that? Super, super clear. Then she's got her blog on here. So a bunch of articles on here that help her um, to put things up. I love that it's just a four minute read or a five minute read. Um, she's got some destinations on here that just help to give people ideas of where they can go to. And all of these images all have colors from her color palette or complement her color palette. Okay. And so here, this is at the bottom, what I wanted to show you, this is the perfect example. She has a full menu down the side, down the bottom here, but she also has her social icons. How tiny are they? But it's good because Patty knows that she doesn't want to take people off of her website, okay? And so on her website, she's just done an incredible job. And like I said, she came through website in a weekend and um, she just did so amazingly. They have so much traffic to this website. But most importantly, other than the traffic, is the conversion that happens on this website. So I just wanted to show that with you. I might bring that up a little bit later on. But the homepage web layout there, what kind of things did you see on there that you could add to your homepage? Maybe it was a three-step process. Maybe it was an idea for destinations to list out some destinations. Maybe it was... Um, Maybe it was um, a small about section, putting your core message right at the top. Maybe it's taking your menu eye off and putting it at the bottom. Maybe it's moving your social icons. There's a lot that you can do on your existing homepage to make really good changes, okay? And when it comes to the bio on her website, the biggest tip that I want to give you for your bio is that it's so counterintuitive. Your bio is not about you. I know bio stands for biography, which is the story of your life written by you. It's not. We shouldn't even use the word bio. It's really what you do, who you do it for, how it's going to help them, and what they should do next. What you do, who you do it for, how it will help them, and what they should do next. 
Okay, here's something nine out of 10 travel advisors are messing up. You guys, you got to do you got to fix this on your website. So please make a note of this nine out of 10 travel advisors websites that we visit do not have their full first name. Do not have Sandra McLemore. You can't find Sandra McLemore anywhere on the first page. Do you know why this is a problem? Because when somebody's telling their friend about you and says, hey, Donna, did you know that I've got this friend, Glenda, who's a travel advisor? She would be amazing for you. I can't remember the name of her business. Let me look it up. And then she goes in and types in Glenda Smith travel. Google should find Glenda Smith on your homepage somewhere so that it shows up in the search results. So many of you do not have your first and last name really quickly on your website where somebody can see it and, and multiple parts in your website. OK, you've got to have your full first name. It's super critical. Dream worthy destinations. Do you have a section on your website that encourages people to think about destinations that maybe they'd never thought about? Maybe they'd never thought about it. Do you know where most people get the ideas for their, their vacations? It's one of two places. One, somewhere that they've seen in film or television, hence the exodus to Italy and right now and, and parts of Africa like Ghana. And number because we both saw those a lot on television in the last two or three years. And the second place is from family and friends. But you should be feeding them dreamworthy destinations. Next, inspiring itineraries. You should have on your website ideas of itineraries. I'm going to pull up a different website for a client of ours, um, Alpha. Again, I do not want you to go to this website because I don't want you to mess up her analytics. It's not fair to do that to our travel advisor friends. Uh, this is a very old website. Actually, she needs a bit of a refresh. Um, one, because she's got a menu at the top. This is how we used to do it five years ago. I think we did this website five years ago for, uh, for her. Uh, Elfa is actually from Iceland and her husband is a pilot for Icelandic uh, Iceland Airlines, Icelandic Air, I can't remember. Um, and so all she does is Iceland. She's a specialist in it. So senior travel, character travel, featured destinations, and she's pretty amazing. Oh, I have to email. Uh, Ez, can you leave, um, write me um, a Slack message to send Elfa a message? I'm just going to let her know about her website there so she can fix that. Um, so she does straight up Iceland. But look at this. She talks about groups, romance travel, wellness, girls getaways. So she's planting ideas. I want to go to Iceland and I'd only thought about going with Anthony, but actually I think I'd rather go with a group of girlfriends or a group of friends because Anthony's going to feel left out. So she's putting all of this in here. She's giving all of these ideas here for people. And so I think that this is really, really critical. Itinerary plans. I want to show you that she's put in here itinerary ideas for different groups of people. And I love this. This is the girls getaway itinerary for Iceland. So day one, welcome to Iceland and Reykjavik. Day two, the golden circle with a gourmet twist. Day three, Thor Smart super Jeep tour and hiking. Day four, Blue Lagoon Spa in Reykjavik. And day five is the farewell. By putting these itineraries in here, a lot of you are thinking to yourself, ugh, I don't want people to go and book it by themselves. If they were going to book it by themselves, they're not your ideal client anyway. This makes me know for sure that when I go to Iceland, I will be booking with Alpha, right? If you don't know that much about Iceland, you probably want to book with Alpha as well. So I think that there's a really good space on your page for itineraries. I don't believe in creating them in Travify or similar and putting them on your website unless you can embed them on your website because I think that you absolutely want to be able to see the traffic going to them on your website. You can run ads. You know that Alpha could run an ad to that page on her website, the girl's itinerary, and she could show it to all women aged between 30 and 50 living in the US and she could run an ad just to that page. Isn't that crazy? But you can't do that if you're sending people outside to like Travify or Travel Joy or somewhere else where you built them. Services page. I want to show you the services page back on Exemplary Travel. Um, let me share this tab here. This is the services page that you get in website in a weekend, but you can create this yourself as well. So what we do, this bit here is critical. I think a lot of people do not understand that, tra that travelers who have never booked with a travel agent before 
do not know what you do. So you have to spell it out. Domestic and international air, commercial and private, if you want to do air. If you don't want to do air, don't put air in there. Hotels, villas and apartments. If you don't want to do apartments, take it off. River and ocean cruises, travel insurance, day airport transfers, day tours and excursions, dining and entertainment reservations, unique cultural experiences. Whatever it is that you do, put it up there. People don't know that you can do all of these things. How it changes your travel experience. We actually wrote all of this copy um, for our website in a weekend clients. And we tell them how it helps them to use a travel advisor. And then what happens when they DIY their own travel. You cannot copy this text. This is exclusively for our clients. But if you're on website in a weekend, you would get all of this text for your website. I think it's really critical. People look at this and there's what happens when you DIY your travel. Missed flights, awful hotel rooms that don't match the brochure images, travel insurance that doesn't work when you need it, waiting on hold for hours at a time to airlines, cruise lines, hotels, and tour companies when you have a question, tired and frustrated fellow travelers, wasted time trying to get from A to B, under planning, over planning, poor document preparation, denied entry and re-entry fees, finding out activities and sites are closed or limited when you arrive, struggling to find dining options in limited capacity or busy seasons. Of course, they're all things that could happen. Um, they're all things that have happened to all of us before. Planning fees. We always encourage you to put your planning fee on your website. This is all copy that we give to website in a weekend as well. And you set your own prices, but we recommend having a white glove, a group fee, which is just for the group leader. It's a planning, own, it's a itinerary design only, no booking. And then um, emergency support and rebooking fee. They're just the fees that we recommend, but you can put whatever you want on there. And then having your process. This is where you would spill out your process a little bit longer longer than three steps. So we, we believe in the quick hello call, 15 minute video or phone call, then contract and planning fee, then planning meeting, then research presentations and adjustments. Then while you're away, this is what will happen. And then when you get home, this is what will happen. It's six steps. So having a services page on your website with all of this information is critical. Make a note for yourself right now if you know that you need to update your services page with any of that information. Alrighty, the step-by-step -step tactic is what we talked about. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Three to five steps on the homepage. I think three is great for your homepage and you can go up to six on your actual um, services page. Next, managing your website. You have to have full access to manage your website, which means deleting pages, adding pages, removing and adding content. That's all I'm going to say about that. You need to have a way that you can collect email addresses. If you don't have a lead magnet or your lead magnet's not working, just collect email addresses for people to sign up for your community. As long as you are emailing them weekly, that's the most important thing. But you've got to start building your email list. And you have to have calls to action for your visitors. Notice on both the websites that I showed you, there were calls to go through to like Calendly and other places like that where people could book an appointment. So let's go now and have a look at your workbook. I want you to open your workbook so that we can use that. Um, let me pull it up. Okay, one second. And I wanna walk through the actual workbook with you. Where is my workbook? Oh, here it is here. Okay. I've got it. All righty. Oh, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Here it is right here. Oh, I've got way too many tabs open. Okay, here we go. All righty. So 20 elements that you must have for your travel business works, work, uh, travel business website. So in here, I talk about the fact that if your website is not currently turning strangers into email subscribers, your website is failing you. If you are not currently getting phone calls or bookings from your website, like a meeting bookings, your website is failing you. OK, so let's do this audit right now. If you have this downloaded, I want you to open this up and I want you to check off the things in here that you need to add to your current website. And if you don't have a website, you'll be putting all of them. If you don't have this downloaded, you could just write a list. So the first one is and I'll just zoom in to make it a little easier. Business niche. Is it clear on your website what your niche is? Is that clear on your website? 
what you book and who you book for. Is it super clear that that's what you do? Next, ideal client. Is it clear who you do it for? So we saw on there, on the two examples that I showed you, the type of clients that people book, the girls' getaways, the groups, the families, retired couples, empty nesters, is that clear? And do the photos on your website, do the images match your ideal client? So Alpha at your Iceland had pictures of girls, girls on their getaway. She had pictures of couples. Core message, now that you've got your one sentence core message, is that on your website? It should be everywhere. It should be in your email signature. It should be on your business cards. It should be in your social media bios. It should be the first thing you see when you open your website. Okay, do you have a business name and your domain purchased? Make sure that you do that. One thing I noticed when I was looking at the registrations for this event, the number of people that have apostrophes in your business name, you should not have apostrophes in your business name because it is so easy for that to be jumbled and for your website and your email address to not export properly into people's programs and contact information. Uh, try to stay away from cutesy things like biz, B-I-Z, travel biz. That's not professional. That's not polished. Um, you don't want to have Gmail addresses. You need a proper, e a proper email address for your website that you can buy through Squarespace or Google. Okay. Core message is the same as elevator pitch. Yes. Okay. Next, logo. If you don't have a logo, do exactly what I told you, word mark. Just write your business name in your font, in your color. Tagline. So a tagline, Our we have a tagline um, that we help you get a consistent stream of new, we help travel businesses get a consistent stream of new clients. That's kind of our core message because it's who we help and what we do, but we also have a tagline. That's our core message. Our tagline is just three words, content, coaching, and community. If you want a tagline, I definitely recommend just doing three words. Three words. Okay? You don't have to have one though. Destination focus. Do you, are you showing off destinations that match with the type of travel you want to sell? Do you have a footer on your website full of like your menu and your social handles and your logos and your host agency and all the things? Is, is, your, is your footer right? Your seller of travel ID, that kind of stuff. Keywords. So keywords, we're, we're going to have to do a different, um, I've got a podcast episode coming up on tra uh, training for keywords and how to choose the right keywords for your business. Call to action. Do you have buttons that tell people, click here to book an appointment? Does it go to your calendar? Do you have an online calendar where people can book appointments? Color palette and font. Do you have to update these on your website? Social media links, an opt-in form for, for people to sign up for your email list. A lead magnet, maybe you won't have a lead magnet to begin with. Maybe you'll just take email addresses. A link to your calendar, a plan to work with you. That's your three steps, step one, two, and three. This is what it's like. Text for each page of your website, high resolution images on each page, a headshot of you, a nice photo of your face. If you don't have one, go outside and take one. Don't, don't put any makeup on, just do your hair nicely. Go outside, take a picture and stand in the shade if it's bright and sunny, stand outside and then come through and run it through a filter so that it cleans up your face and puts some contouring on and smooths out your skin to the point that you still look like you, but it looks like a professional headshot. You can even use AI if you want to. Testimonials. Do you have testimonials on your website? Legal contracts, website terms and conditions and a privacy policy. And then contact information. This is huge. Most of you do not have this. I want you to have on there your phone number, your email address, your time zone, and what time people can call you. What time can they call you? Is it 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Mondays and Wednesdays? Is it every day from 9 until 12? Like, what is it? And you don't have to pick up. It can go to voicemail. But if you are the type of travel advisor that thinks to yourself, I'm not putting my phone number on there. I don't want random people calling me. Well, that might equate to one of the reasons why you don't know where your next booking is coming from. Okay. And then finally, at the bottom of this worksheet, it says, I want you to ask yourself and put a check mark next to the things that you cannot control. Cannot control. Add a new page. Put a check next to that if you cannot add a new page on your website. Can you add a pop up box? Put a check next to that if you cannot add a pop up box. This is a cannot section here. 
Can you embed code? Even if you don't know how to or why you would, can you do that? Can you add buttons? If you cannot add buttons, put a check next to that. Remove any advertising that your host agency or consortia gave you. Safeguard your subscribers. Do you know how many host agencies and consortia take your email list and people who visit your website and target them directly? Remove external links. Can you remove stuff from your website? And can you reorganize the layout of a page? That's going to tell you a lot right there, okay? All right. So under each of those, I've written you a little paragraph to help you as you're going through fixing things on your website right here. And I've given you some pro tips on there as well, okay? So here I've also given you some examples of branding. These are clients that either came from website in a weekend or we designed their website for them. And I've just given you some screenshots of their website and then shown their color palettes next to it. Isn't it incredible how we look at the colors? Like I look at these colors and they do nothing for me, yet they are perfect for this website. She does a ton of Europe and luxury travel and these beiges and browns work so well with her color palette. Um, the luxury cruise guys, I love their website. I love that their website has got beige. Uh, it's got a beige in there, which is like the brown family. It's got a blue and it's got a gray. And it is perfect because look at all of these images here of the luxury cruise line cabins and the ocean and just all, it works beautifully. This one here is um, Breathe, Move, Travel. Uh, her, the first thing you see is red, but it's actually just one lady with a red shirt. Her color palette though, she's got a blue, a green and a beige. So nice. So, so nice. We were able to do so much image wise with her website. A completely different color palette. This is from Escape Into Travel. This is all about family travel. And it talks about when was your last, vaca last family vacation and what was it like? And so great color palette there. Just blues. Oh, notice down the bottom here, the color pal palette is actually just blue. It's all blues. This um, color of the background here, this coral color just can pick up from the skin in the top there. It's not part of her palette. Uh, Momcation Escapes. Really, really, really simple. She used black, white, and blue. Three colors. That's it. Okay. And then you've got a little worksheet at the end that you can fill in when we're done about brand name, uh, business names, your brand colors, um, core message, destinations, messaging, whether or not you're going to use logo and or headshot. And then this is the most important thing that we're going to end on before I take some questions from you. So next steps, you have six steps or three steps, depending on what you're going to do. So number one, you have to decide who is going to make these changes for you or who's going to create this website or change your website for you. So you have three options. Number one is done for you, that you would hire a website designer to do the entire thing for you and just hand over a finished product. It's going to cost you between five and $10,000. We know that because we offer that service. Number two, done with you. That's website in a weekend. If you want to come and join us, we open up bookings today. It's on October 27th and 28th. And you could do it yourself. I built my very first website myself. There is no shade to be thrown at DIY. The only thing you need to know about DIY is it looks DIY. And DIY is only temporary until you can afford a done with you or a done for you. OK, the problem with DIY is that you just don't know how long it's going to take. Unknown amount of time, energy and what the outcome is going to be. So you'll decide on one of those. The next thing you're going to do is to complete your audit. So that checklist that I just gave you before where you check off all the things that you need and don't need, because that's going to be the easiest way for you to turn that over to someone to fix your existing website for you or for yourself to fix the existing website because you'll have a checklist now. Then what you want to do is block time. So based on the first step decision that you made, whether you're it's a done for you, done with you or do it yourself, that's going to determine how much time you need to have blocked off in your calendar. So you want to block that time in your calendar. It might be two days that you're going to block if you're doing website in a weekend. It might be two months that you want to block if you're building it out yourself. It might be two weeks if you're not going to do anything but that. Um, or it might just be two days in finding a website designer and researching them and interviewing them. Next, you'll want to start your copywriting process. If you're getting your website done by someone else, other than us, that is, by someone else, you have to provide all the images and you have to provide all of the copy. You have to do that. That's normal in the website world. When I had a website made for me for something 10 years ago and nothing has changed, I had to, she's like, send me all your copy. And I was like, huh, what? 
I didn't realize how much work there still had to be done on my end, even though I was hiring someone. Okay. My pro tip for you, if you need to start writing your copy is to get the book building a story brand by Donald Miller. It will help you out immensely. I actually listened to his audio of building the story brand. Uh, then you'll want to collect all of your assets. So if you're not doing website in a weekend, you're going to need to get all of your assets together. That's your images, stock images. Uh, you can go to suppliers. You can use free galleries. You can uh, use the supplier galleries. Just be clear, even if you use a free image or a supplier gallery image, it still has terms and conditions. There are tourism boards and suppliers out there that do not let you use web, web, uh, the images in the galleries they give you forever. They have expiry dates, which means you have to go back and find them and remove them. Or they make you credit the photographer and you don't want to have to do that on your website. Then after you've got all your assets together, the next thing to do is to create a traffic plan. So once your website is published, you need to have a plan to drive traffic to it. Um, we have a uh, podcast episode number 20, which comes out this week, um, 19 and 20, because we're doing two a week right now. They That has ideas for you on where to promote your website. So. The first thing that I need to ask you in the chat, which of these three options is going to work best for you right now? Which of these three options will work best for you? Are you going to hire a designer? Number one, are you going to do it? So I want you to write in the chat, you're going to hire a designer, you're going to do a website in a weekend, or you're going to do it yourself. There is no judgment here. You got to do what's best for you in this moment. But I just want you to leave here with a plan. I want you to leave here with a plan. Okay. <laughs> Melissa says she did website in a weekend in 2022, but she didn't have that page. Um, I believe that they paid a different rate for their website in a weekend, which is why they had more, but email us Melissa and we'll help you. Okay. So lots of people doing website in a weekend, lots of people doing it themselves. Rhonda says, I have a designer already. That's awesome, Rhonda. It means you'll be able to take this list of things that you want to add and give it to them. Okay. Um, Camille says, I have Voyager website. I can make any changes I want. Can I do this in website in a weekend? Website in a weekend, we start from scratch for you because we load all of your colors. And also I will show you in a minute. There's an, um, for the, in the first five, if you're booking website in a weekend in the first five days, we're actually going to provide all your images and I'm going to write all your copy for you. And we've never done that before. So um, you would be starting from scratch. We would not do a Voyager website. You should go and listen to episode number 18 of our pod. I uh, know as which is the podcast episode that, hold on, I'm just going to pull it up on my screen. Um, there is a podcast episode. If you have a website that was given to you by a host agency or consortia, I really want you to check out this podcast episode. Go to travelmarketingandmedia.com slash podcast, and it is episode number 16. Is someone else trafficking and benefiting from your website? Because if you have a Voyager website or any other website that was given to you, you want to listen to number 16 before you make the decision to either improve your website or start from scratch. I also think that you should think very clearly about what your long-term plan is. If you might want to change host agencies down the track, if you might want to become independent, you want to have your own website that is yours. People tell me all the time, well, my franchise stops me from doing that. My host agency won't let me. That is BS. You can have a website of your own. If your contract says that you have to book all travel through their website, that's right. You do have to. But there's nothing stopping you from building an email list and marketing and get, growing your business with your own website and then using their website as the transactional website as opposed to the promotional website. Um what platform do we do website in a weekend on? Wix for 10,001 reasons. Wix, 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 Wix. It means that you own your own website. You are in complete control of your website. We can guide you and help you on your website. In fact, in I think it's a week's time we'll be doing or two weeks time. I can't remember. No, it's longer than that. It's in a couple of weeks time. We'll be doing a get together for everyone who's done website in a weekend and doing a Q&A and showing people how to troubleshoot Add, add new things, new features. It's the easiest. Unlike WordPress or Show It, which is has its blog based on WordPress, you don't have to update the plugins or the operating service. So think of it this way. I have an Apple phone, right? Oh, my light's on. <laughs> I have an Apple phone. It means I have to update the iOS software. When you update iOS software, which is like WordPress, you also have your apps stop working. Things go weird on your apps because the developer for each app has to update their app so that 
it is um, so that it works with the new operating system. When you use WordPress or show it, it's exactly the same thing. You have a lot of updating to do and a lot of things to be careful of. We have a website developer on our team who literally helps us to do all of that stuff. If you can't afford to have a website developer, then you shouldn't be messing with WordPress. Um, my website is through Travify. That is so bizarre. That is so bizarre. That means you don't have your own website. It's a Travify website. So I would go and listen to episode number 16 before you decide how and when you're going to do it. Um, Wix is amazing now. It has come so, 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 so far. Um, okay, what else? Do you refresh existing websites that have been done somewhere else? No, we find asbestos in the walls. That's the easiest way I have to explain it. We did this in our first year that we were in business seven years ago, and we will never do it ever again. It's like putting makeup on someone else's already existing makeup. It's like getting a house and not doing an inspection first. What we find underneath is frightening. And we do that for you on website in a weekend. We set up the frame of the house. We build the entire frame and we literally put up all of the sheet, uh, is it the sheet rock, the drywall, and then you come in and make your mark on it. It's much better that way. Um, how is Wix for SEO? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We were literally on Wix until two years ago. And the only reason we're not on Wix now is because of the different things on our website, like the membership and the shop. And it just got really complex and the courses. And we wanted you, I don't know if any of you remember that we used to have, um, you want to see the template for this year's uh, website in a weekend. It's almost finished. I will send it to you tomorrow. If you guys want to see it before you sign up, I'll send it to you tomorrow. Would you like that? Um, I can send that out. I'll send out a little video with a sneak peek of what it looks like because it's a very different um, layout than it was in the last four groups that we had come through. We try to switch up the layout every couple of groups just to keep it different and to add new things to it. Um, do you offer a service to write or update our copy? Only if you're starting from scratch on a website in a weekend and you're booking in the first five days. Yes. Okay. I own my domain and it's hosted by Voyager website. Hold on, what does that say? I own my domain and it's hosted by Voyager websites on Weebly, which I can move to anywhere I want. That's really good. That's really, really good. But even owning your domain, does that mean that if you don't go with that host agency anymore that you lose your website? How does that work? And the other thing I want to just go listen to episode 16. If you have a Voyager website, go listen to episode number 16. Okay. Will all of our websites look alike? No. They'll look completely different because they'll have all their own colors, images, copy. They will look completely different. Do all airline website looks, websites look alike? Pretty much. They all have the same booking features and function. They just have different branding on them. Okay. So questions. Any questions about today, about your brand and about your website? and how you can update them. While you're answering those, while you're typing in your questions, I wanna show you where you can get the bonus brand booklet. Ez has put that live on our website. It's gonna be live just for the next few hours. So if you're watching the replay on this, I am so sorry, but this is not available to you. This was for our live show ups. If you showed up live, well done, well done. Um, I know that today was uh, a religious holiday for some, and we try so hard to make these events available for everybody, but we can't please everyone. And if you did, if you're catching the replay because you celebrated your holiday, I hope you had a beautiful celebration. Um, we are right now on the live event three page where you joined us today. I want to show you where you're going to get your stuff. So scroll down. You're going to be able to watch the replay right here if you want to watch this again. If you want to click to see the comments, you would click on here, watch on YouTube. Okay. Um, then here under resources, you have to refresh your page if you can't see all three, because we put this up while I was teaching you. So the first one is the event workbook. You're going to click here. And that's the workbook that we were just looking at. That's got the audit in there. If you're going to do the changes to your own website, excellent use the audit form. If you've got a designer already, use the audit form and give that to them. Just make sure your designer knows they cannot copy our designs, formats, frameworks, wording, anything like that. We've taken two designers to court and we will keep doing so because we work really, really, really hard on our work and there's just no reason for other designers to copy it. They can come up with their own good things. And if they can't, they're not the right designer for you. Um, so that's the event workbook. Um, about website in a weekend, if you wanna learn about it, I'm gonna click on that in a second so you can see a little bit more. And then the bonus brand gift that we gave you, which is the template for you to create your own mood board. 
that is here as well. It's going to be up for the next couple of hours if you're watching live. Actually, we'll leave it up for the rest of the day. Go ahead and download it and keep it because this will disappear. It won't be here on September 17th and onwards. And then we would love your feedback today in here as well. You'll win a $70 uh, voucher or if you're chosen and you win from today and you have the all access pass, I will do a website review for you and give you advice on how to change your website. So to finish out, I'm just going to open up website in a weekend um, and just go through and take any questions that you have about it. Um, it says here, Wix website not published. Can Wix help? Um, yes, we can also point you in the right direction as well. It's really easy to publish your Wix website, but if you would rather um, get technical help, we can point you in the right direction. But there's a company called Task Birdie. It's one of our sister companies. We don't own it. We love it. They're sisters of ours. Task Birdie can connect it for you. Um, that's Kiki, who used to work with us, went out and created her own business. She does a lot of admin, copywriting, email marketing and stuff for travel businesses she can help connect your domain, not a problem. So let's go through the website in a weekend information. It's October 27th and 28th, which is a Friday and a Saturday. Do you know how much I love you all and want you to win? Do you know? October 28th is my wedding anniversary and I'm going to be with you. So that's how much I want you to win. Okay. You're going to arrive on day one empty handed. You're going to leave on day two with a breathtaking website. 100% of participants have been able to do it, to actually get in and do the work during the day. Almost all of them have connected their website. The ones who haven't have not been able to because they're still making some decisions in their business that they're not 100% ready yet. So it might be that they wanted to jump in and do it, but they need to go back and they're still figuring out their niche. Maybe they're doing it part-time because they have a full-time job and they're not ready to publish yet. But there isn't anyone who has finished the website and not been able to publish it unless they've had a technical issue, in which case we're able to help them with that. So... If you are not proud of your website and it's not converting strangers into email subscribers and email subscribers into paying clients, it is failing you. If you're not sure if it's for you, you can also schedule a 10 minute call with my team to ask any questions about website in a weekend. Um, a couple of things that I want to point out on here that I would love you to go look at when we end up end in the next five minutes. Um, Lisa has shared about her experience. Lisa's on our call today. She did website in a weekend. Um, I would tell her to write in the chat what she thought about it, but she actually wrote a full review here of why she chose it. And I just want to read to you what she wrote. So this is uh, Lisa. And Lisa said, I chose to do website in a weekend because I wanted a website I could be proud of, one that reflected me as a travel advisor, one with that would inspire potential clients, and one that would represent my brand to the best of its ability. I knew my DIY website was not it. I was not proud of it. Therefore, I did not promote it. And that made no sense. Does anyone else feel like that? They don't promote their website or show it off because they're not proud of it. I knew my website was my storefront and needed to be the best it could be, but I needed serious help to get there. Once I clicked the register now button, I felt a huge sense of relief. Help was on the way. I started to get nervous, but reminded myself that my DIY attempt could not get any worse. So this weekend would only improve my situation. Once I started receiving the emails from Sandra on things we needed to do before the workshop, I was nothing but excited. They were so helpful and made really made the pre-workshop planning process easy and much less intimidating. I was very uncertain about my ability to write effective copy. I did not know how to pick inspiring pictures to how to lay out the framework. I am not a web designer. That's why I needed help. I felt very supported and encouraged throughout the entire weekend. Having the TMM team in a private chat room to fix any issues in real time was fantastic. Having a, what she's referring to there is we have a Zoom room. It's like a lifeline at any stage during the weekend. If you need to cry, then get help. You can click on the Zoom room and we have a team member who's in the room waiting for you. And you just go in and you're like, I can't do this. And they're like, okay, here, 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 go back. And so then you quickly go back into the room. It's like running off the sideline on a football field, getting help and then running back on again. That's what she means by um, the private chat room. Having our questions answered as we move through the process was helpful. It made me uh, the entire process make more sense sense. Building the website in real time, going step to step, not only built my site, but gave me the knowledge that I need to be able to run and work in my site. This is huge, she says. 
I can make changes. I understand how it works and I don't have to be intimidated anymore. I am so proud of it. I love it. It was so worth it. There were so many highlights, but seeing my website come together and be a representation of my brand is the cherry on top of the ice cream on the top of the cake. <laughs> That's so cute. It now really is something I'm proud of. It clearly defines my niche. It speaks to those who I want to work with. I'm so glad I made the investment. There is another person on here as well that I want you to read about. Um, that write out her experience. And she was really nervous about the tech as well. So I think that that's interesting uh, for you to read there. People are looking for three things when they visit your website. So if you're going to redo your own website, I want you to know this as well. They want to know three things when they get to your website. They want to know that you are an expert with experience, basically that you are who you say you are. They want to know, number two, that the type of travel they enjoy is something that you have vast knowledge in, that you can offer them ideas and match them with the very best accommodation and experiences. And number three, they want to know that you already have happy clients. OK, so um, these are the benefits that you'll get from the website in a weekend. Um, I want you to scroll down and have a look at all of the different things that you get. But... Most importantly, I want you to know that, oh, here, that's Kim. Kim shares her experience on here as well. I want you to know that, oh, I didn't put it on here. That's okay. <laughs> I want you to know that for those of you who are signing up before September 20th, September 20th, write that down. September, is it 20th as, oh my gosh, 20th, 25th. For those of you who are signing up before the, um, I think it's the 20th. I'll email you. I will email all of you. Um, before those of you who are signing up, for those of you who are signing up in the early bird window, let's just say that in the early bird window, you get two extra benefits. One is that we're going to pick, I, Sandra McLemore, I'm going to pick, pay for, and place all of your images down on your website and we'll be buying them from Shutterstock. So you'll have super high quality. They're $29 each. I don't care how much I have to pay for your website. I will pick personally pay for personally and place the girls and my team, the website images down for you. That's if you book in the early bird window. And then also if you book in the early bird window, we're going to get you to fill in a really uh, detailed onboarding form and you can either speak the words to us or you can um, in a audio. So you can read the question and then just explain it to us. You don't have to write it um, or you can type it if you want to. We will write the copy for you. And then you'll get a PDF with a Word document with all the copies. So on the website in a weekend experience, some people will be writing the copy as they go, which is the normal experience. And if you decided to do to sign up in the first five days and you got the images and the copy included for your whole website, you will just be ready to copy and paste. The web, the experience is for you to learn how to do it as we go. So don't think that you're not getting a good experience if you have the regular experience, not the early bird. I'll send an email on all of that. I just want to make sure that I don't have any other questions. Kayla says, I've already signed up. Do we have start times for each day? We do not. It'll usually be between eight and nine in the morning. It's an early morning start. And the reason for that is I will be in Miami. I will not be in California. So what the reason... Well, actually, that's not true. Well, it is true that I'll be in Miami. What's not true is the reason why we don't know the start time. We never know the start time until a few days out because or until we close bookings because we want to see where everybody is from and then to make it either eight or nine in the morning. Um, and because if everyone is on the East Coast, that's going to be very different than if we have some people on the West Coast. If it's on the West Coast, we want to accommodate everybody. So that's how we do it. We never go past 4 p.m. in the afternoon Pacific time. So never past 7 p.m. If both we're saying that late, we're starting late for you. So it's either going to be like a, I don't know, we'll, we'll see as they come through, but it's not going to affect your evenings at all. Most people tell us who do this experience, we've done it four times now, tell us that they end up working through the whole night because they get so excited, which I recommend that. But if that's what you do, that's what you do. Um, okay, blank pages. We are also giving you a blank page this year, uh, this season. This is the last one that we're doing also until um, the first half of next year. We're not doing another one. I don't think it's going to be until after the River Cruise Expo. So it's probably going to be April or May next year is when we do our next one. Um, do we have startup? To okay, that's that question there. Any more questions? Any questions? Not about website in a weekend. It could be about anything, anything at all. Let me check your questions. Okay, while you're talking and thinking about your questions, I would like to know this right here on the screen. What are you going to do in the next two days? What single task are you going to do? 
Are you going to complete the audit? Are you going to choose your colors? Are you going to do your brand board with your mood images? Are you going to choose new fonts? Are you going to decide who, how you're going to move forward? What are you going to do? I want to know an actual action of something that you are going to do. Okay. Um, oh, I wanted to share while you're doing that, I want you to write down this website as well. This will be helpful if you need to pick color palettes. This is a free website that I am sharing with you. It's called coolors.co. Odd spelling there. It's not .com, it's .co. And also colors has got an extra O and no U depending on where you come from. Coolors.co and you'll be able to find some good color palettes in there. I did see a question before about how do we know what color palettes... Um, work for what? I would say the bright, bold color palettes are really good for Mexico and Caribbean. If you're looking for, it's, it's all to do with the images you're going to use. That's why I showed you the Unsplash Gallery. I would create a mood board on the brand template we gave you and pop in images of all the destinations that you want to book and then see what the common theme is and that will help guide you. So the Luxury Cruise Guys, they have all blues because they only do high-end luxury cruising. They do tall ships, rivers, and oceans, but they do like scenic eclipse kind of bookings, um, explorer, those kinds of ships. Whereas if you did mostly all-inclusive resorts in the Caribbean, you can get out there with some teal and orange and greens and yellows and different colors like that, but you would use them sparingly and use a lot of white backgrounds in there as well. How many years anniversary are you celebrating? Do you want to know a secret? I'll tell you a secret. Number one, I don't know. Anthony knows those things. Number two, it's our wedding anniversary, not our marriage anniversary, if you know what I mean. So we got married in on February 14th. Not many people know this. Now they do. We got married on February 14th in 2017. So that's the big anniversary for me. And our wedding was later in October that year. And I'm not getting into it. But a certain president was elected just a few months before we got married and our immigration attorney told us that he was going to close down embassy staff all around the world and that we needed to do it quickly because I needed to change from one visa to another visa. I was here working on a visa for like 20 years almost, but I needed to change from one to another. And she said, if you do it after, he's inaugur after the inauguration, too far after the inauguration, you're going to get stuck. One of my girlfriends has the same situation and she waited five years for her residency and I got mine in seven months, seven or eight months, not even that, maybe five months I think it took me to get mine. Um, but I'm now an American citizen, so it's it's all good. But um, yeah, so our marriage anniversary is, is February 2017 and we got married October 2017. So 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So six year marriage wedding anniversary we've already been married six and a half years and it'll be our sixth wedding anniversary and we had a travel themed wedding did you know that where that we had big departure boards and you had to go to your gate i.e your table and we got married at the airport go to sandra travel tv on instagram and you'll find pictures um i had my pictures taken on the runway it was pretty amazing okay so um any questions? I just want to make sure that's my wedding anniversary too. Happy wedding anniversary. That's awesome. Okay. I think that I have all the questions, you guys. I think I got them all for you. Um, I just want to know what you're working on. And I just want to put up some of those comments. And then I have one final question for you. Let me just go to that. And then I'll let you go for the day. I'll call my two little friends. I'll call my husband and my shadow. I call them. They're at the park right now. Tell them they can come back inside. Okay. Oh, wedding photos were awesome. You're, oh, thank you. I loved them. They're on my Instagram if you want to check them out. Yes, a travel wedding theme. That was it. Okay. I'm looking for, okay, what people are going to do today. So Laura Gonzalez, you're doing your mood board today. You're going to love it. It is so good. Um, Miranda Taylor. Hi, Miss Miranda. I've never seen your name before. Welcome. She's going to fix her homepage today. Um, let's see. Laura says, I love my logos and colors, but not sure it works for my niche. So Laura, when you've done your mood board, that's going to help you a lot. Question here. I bought a new URL on GoDaddy and have not yet created a website. Can I utilize it without having to go any further on GoDaddy? Absolutely. It doesn't matter where you bought your domain. Not a problem. You'll still be able to do that because you'll connect your domain and your website. Okay. Uh, 
Stephen says, I'm going to complete the audit. I already love my brand colors and fonts. So good. And do a mood board, Stephen, as well. That's going to help you as well. Stephen, Stefan, I, I'm not sure. I'm sorry there. Christine says, I'm going to audit my current website. Um, Crease Planner, someone at Crease Planner says, I'm going to read the handouts, pick my colors, modify my website, and start working on an independent weekly email to bring in my own clients. Woohoo! That's a lot right there. Jamie says, I've done the audit, so I'm going to do the mood board and move my menu to the footer and do more work on my footer. I love that for you. Barbara says, I'm going to do my mood board. Someone else says, I'm going to revisit my colors and mood board. Awesome. We have one last question for you. Okay. One last question for you, for you to write in the chat, and then we're all going to go and enjoy our weekends. What was your best moment from today? Your very best moment, your aha moment. Like, what did you hear today or learn today that you're like, okay, now I have clarity. Or maybe it's like, well, this has just brought up a whole bunch of open a can of worms, but you're glad you know now. Or what is it today that was the best for you? And while you're writing those out, Ez, can you go ahead and put the link for today's feedback survey on there as well? Do I have a recommendation for my email marketing platform? I love Flowdesk, but my top recommendation is always going to be ConvertKit. And um, I'll give you a link. Ez will put the link for Smart Tools or Flora inside of the chat. Go to our website, click on Smart Tools, and you'll see what we recommend over there. Um, I think that those are really important. Actually, as we can also add to the live event page, we can add the Smart Tools link on there. Okay. Let's see. Best moments. Let's share them. Um, to be clear and consistent. Love that. Best moment, knowing that I need to make changes and where to start. Love that. Today was not just about website and weekend. Today is about getting you that list of things that you need to get done, clarity on how to do them so that you can make your own changes. You can hire a designer or you can do website in a weekend. Can we make you do all of it? <laughs> yeah, you can do the white glove service. It's quite a significant um, investment. It's between five and $10,000, but we literally do everything for you, including social media graphics, copywriting. We do all your entire website. We just hand it over to you when it's finished. You can. Okay, no menu at the top of the page is Laurie's biggest, um, best moment today. Layla says to be consistent. Yes, yes, it's not a brand until it's consistent. Deborah says the importance of setting up by core message. Oh my goodness, so much so. Episode 16 of the podcast is your biggest takeaway, so it should be. I think it will blow your mind when you listen to it because it's something that you've never considered that I had never considered until I learned it recently from my marketing coach. Um Someone else's biggest moment, I now believe that I really can do this and will move ahead rather than quitting the travel business as I have seriously considered it. Great content. Thank you. I don't know who wrote that, but I really feel you today. You are my favorite comment today. Can you do a, Can you do me a favor? Can you go over to my podcast and start listening from episode number two onwards? I think that will give you a ton of clarity. Y'all, if you have not listened to the podcast, start at number two. And just have it on while you're driving or walking or folding laundry. It gives you an immense amount of clarity. It's free. And it's the only voice that you need in your ears because it's the only voice that is purely wanting what you need for your business, not the agendas of anyone else in the industry. How do you find the podcast? Well, here's a good thing. If you've never listened to a podcast before, it's so easy. It's travelmarketingandmedia.com slash podcast. And you don't have to have any tech or software. You can just listen right there on the website. Um, it really is really, really, really good. Okay. Uh, honing in on how to convey what I do concisely. Yes. Wendy Burke says core message and new website updates. So good. Maria says too many to list. Someone else. Thanks for the great info. Someone else clear view of what colors to choose and not to choose amazing website audit was the best day today. Roseanne says that I should be able to do this even though I'm overwhelmed so much. So let me leave you with a final tip. This is something that I'm working on in my own business. It gives me goosies. Stop writing projects on your task list. Stop doing it. Stop writing projects on your task list. For example, a project is audit website. A project, sorry, a project is up, update website. A project is update branding. A project is finish lead magnet. A project, like for me right now, I have to finish the template, the layout for website in a weekend and I need to get it done by tomorrow. And that's a very overwhelming task because I design it myself. Your website will be designed by me. And it's a big daunting task because now I'm going to spend the rest of the day with my family and then I'm going to do it tonight and tomorrow morning so I can email it out to you all tomorrow. 
but it's too daunting on my task list and it makes me feel really overwhelmed. And overwhelm leads to me doing nothing. I literally will go and find something else to do in my house. I will clean baseboards. But if I break up that task into tiny micro tasks, I can do it. So I will write on my list after I finished here, I'm going to go and write on my list all the things that I have to do on the template that is still outstanding. So add dream worthy destinations, decide on destinations, um, add this, add that, remove this, move that. I'm going to go through and make myself a really long, almost like a cooking recipe, step by like list of tasks. Instead of just writing baked banana bread, I'm going to write a list of all the steps that to me is much easier for two reasons. Number one, it lets me move faster. It gives me momentum and momentum requires movement. So it lets me start moving. And number two, even if I don't get the whole task done by tonight, I'll have knocked off a whole bunch of things, which gives me the feeling of, um, of like accomplishment. Because if I just have finished template, I'm never going to get, and I don't get it done today, I'm going to feel like I failed even though I know I did good work and I did something on it. So having lots of little tasks, instead of writing clean out my closet, I wrote, uh, cause I just did a huge clean out of my closet, started losing a lot of weight and now a lot of clothes don't fit. So I wrote in there, remove clothes that don't fit, sort clothes into color block, um, get extra hangers from the guest room, drop, um, get the Vietnam Veterans Association, schedule Vietnam's Veterans Association to come and pick up unwanted clothes because they do pickups in my area. They're amazing, by the way. Look for them online. Um, then um, it was um, so uh, remove summer clothing because summer clothing I'm going to have to pack up soon. We decided we're going to airbag everything, uh, like vacuum seal everything. So that's just an example of a project, clear out wardrobe, never got done for the two years I've had it on my list. Now I can go through and do some of those small tasks. Okay. I hope that that makes sense to you. For those of you who are feeling overwhelmed, I hope that that makes sense. Okay. It's been an amazing day. If you know that you want to sign up for a website in a weekend, go do that right now. If you have questions, email us right now. We'll answer them. If you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with my team, it won't be with me, but it'll be with the girls. Go ahead and book that. It just means you have to wait a couple of days to get your answer. So you might want to email it. Uh, if you email the questions about website in a weekend, I will email you back because my team are off for the weekend. So I will email you back this weekend to make sure that you can take advantage of the early bird um, promo that goes out today or tomorrow by email. And tomorrow I'll send out a link so that you can have a look. It'll be a video so you can have a sneak peek of the layout in there. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.